In 1900, a woman spent on average 58 hours per week on household chores. By 1975, it was down to just 18 hours. One of the chores that had always taken up so much time was shopping, which had to be done almost daily. This is fundamentally how fridges made such a big difference to women. If you can't keep things cool, you have to buy things more frequently. You have to shop every other day in order to get the milk, in order to get the butter, in order to get, you know, the things that you want. So it has the capacity to free up time. It's a, it's a labor-saving device as well as a, as a, as a way of improving hygiene and uh, making, making cooking easier. Unfortunately, fridges were having a huge but sinister impact on the planet that was completely invisible, yet a threat to life itself. In the early days, we use refrigerant liquid gases such as ammonia because it has a low boiling point and it's cheap. But after a while, synthetic refrigerants were seen as the future. The magic answer was known as Freon, but it later became infamous under the abbreviated name CFC, chlorofluorocarbon. CFCs became the standard for almost all domestic refrigerators after World War II. The environment became a top priority in the 1970s and 80s when CFCs were exposed as greenhouse gases and a threat to our precious ozone layer. Refrigerants such as CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, are actually pretty bad for the environment. For example, they go up into the stratosphere where they're broken down by ultraviolet light. So CFCs are a carbon atom attached with two chlorine and two fluorines. When they're broken up by ultraviolet light, you get the chlorine atoms released, and the chlorine atom is no good for the environment. These CFCs have an enormous effect, which we are witnessing today with climate change. It breaks down ozone, and ozone is the stuff that keeps us safe, and it goes all around the globe. So what happens instead is you get gaps where there's not enough ozone, and ultraviolet light makes its way to the Earth. The consequences of this are, of course, the increased temperature of the Earth. It warms up, the warming that we're told about. But also, you get increased ultraviolet light meeting people, so you get increased cancer, increased mutations, and increased blindness. So the negative impact of fridges is deadly serious. Now, energy-efficient and environmentally friendly fridge designs are the top priority without using CFCs. Ammonia is again being used as a natural refrigerant, along with safer synthetic substitutes. Don't panic quite yet. There's lots of research going on to find better and more green options to keep things cold, but without harming the planet. In some countries, we are now much more careful about refrigerator disposal, so that sites like this in landfills will no longer exist but anomalies remain in global policies on climate change. For example, CFCs are banned throughout the European Union member countries on domestic fridges, but not industrial ones. And fridges using CFCs are not banned at all in developing world countries. However, evidence suggests that it's electricity generation to run our fridges that is the biggest culprit of CO2 emissions, not the CFCs. Scientists have said that refrigeration and air conditioning are responsible for consuming one-fifth of the energy produced globally. So the finger points towards developing yet more energy-efficient coolants than we have already. <laughs>